other thoughts or questions or anything before we get going again? Uh, how about, how are you feeling about all this? <laughs> what, what's it been like to be grappling with this all morning? I'm leaving behind denial and moving into anger. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the right direction. <laughs> Anybody else? Feelings? I'm being mindful of uh, how you framed it for me in the beginning that we're attempting to be able to name mm -hmm. something that has been previously <laughs> um, invisible mm -hmm. to us, perhaps. Uh, and so I, in realizing that, I still recognize that some anxiety about, oh, then how do we fix it? Right. Right. That's come up, yeah, several people. Okay. <laughs> Give me my marching orders now. What do I do? <laughs> Let's tidy this up. We're, we can do it. <laughs> right. Um, right, exactly. You're being trained to. Um, and I should remind us all um, that a major number of the problems that fall out from imperialism of various sorts is because people are trying to fix things, uh, and which means intervening in other people's lives, right? Um, and that uh, one of the pieces of the, the Christian values up here that, that I put up was charity, that doing righteous acts, being charitable, um, being well-intended in the world, trying to help people, are all Christian, it's all part of a Christian framework, which doesn't talk about the impact of our efforts to change things, right? It's about intent, not impact, whereas for the people at the receiving end, it's all about impact, and intent really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. So rather than thinking about what we can do, and we'll be talking about what we can do a little later, but we have to really set back and say, what is our, why, what's our motivation here? Is it to feel better? Is it to get forgiveness? Is it to become innocent again? Is it to you know, do the things that we've been taught to do? Or is it actually to be in community with other people and struggling around this stuff and changing how things work at a deep level? So um, I often tell people that the first steps are not to do anything, but actually to start noticing things. Notice how you talk and the people around you talk. Notice the framework that you use, the values, the, the implications. Um, notice how the institutions are operating and, and how Christianity is privileged and powerful and who's making decisions. And, and have these conversations. You know, I often uh, have conversations with friends and start out, seen any Christian hegemony recently? <laughs> you know, it's a great conversation starter. Uh, <laughs> because the first time it's like, Huh? <laughs> right? And then they go off, and I meet them again next week or the following week, and they say, I've been thinking about what you were saying, right? Or, you know, I've been puzzling over this. And um, it begins to create a community around us of folks who are actually thinking critically and sensitively about what's really going on. And then out of that comes other projects. Um, I did a workshop here a couple of years ago over at Star King that, um, and some of this, I, and we started a Christian hegemony discussion group that meets once a month um, at my house, and I'll invite you all to join that um, at the end at the end of the day. But um, there's uh, some of the folks in that group are doing education around issues of Christian hegemony at various public sites and in communities. Um, a couple of people have taken on Christian Zionism in particular, which is a major force in international politics that is not usually seen or named or understood. Um, other people are looking at their organizations and trying to make changes in the policies and you know, things going on. Some of them were um, UU, are now UU ministers um, and are taking this into their congregations and having these discussions and looking at things going on. So there's, there's lots of things that will ripple out. But the, you have to start by really being clear and having a, building some community and allies around you and being able to move out from there. So. So that's just uh, that's a lengthy response, but you, what you were raising was I, I know in the room um, a lot about okay, <laughs> tell me what to do quick because this is otherwise I'm going to be overwhelmed or buried by this kind of stuff.